honey we need to talk about curly cuts have y'all been seeing what's going on like i'm gonna break down the post i'm gonna break down what's happening but we need to talk about what is going on with curly cuts my name is destiny of curls coils and things i'm a natural hair enthusiast i've not been using raw oils and butters for about two and a half years i have gotten curly cuts and we're going to get into my experience what's going on in the larger um community of i am black girl curls and the conversation about the validity of curly cuts are they healthy are they necessary do they cause damage do they eat up your ends so let's go ahead and get into it so where does the quote-unquote controversy of curly cuts begin i first saw rosie amelia's video about her experience with curly cuts um with webbing and velcro ends there have been a few other people that have stepped up in her comments i've seen shelly's video i've seen um what's been going on and it's crazy that these creators are experiencing this especially when they are a lot more strict about their routine um about following i am black girl curls methodology and being really consistent with their curly cuts than other creators out there that have adopted some of the principles like myself i just when it comes to curly cuts they're expensive so i don't necessarily get them every three months like i'm supposed to and i'll break down my experience about it but when it comes to these creators they have been on the mark and following everything that these stylists have been telling them and the hair is tore up their ends are trash and it's really unfortunate to see this happen to creators that i enjoy watching so when Rosie Amelia and Shelly both got their hair blown out to look at what their hair looks like, what do their ends look like, and their suspicions were confirmed that their ends were damaged. Even when going to stylists that are Cut It Kinky certified, but they're not certified. I don't know it was a whole thing about these stylists are only the ones that are certified and cut it kinky and all these other ones it was just weird it's, it, they have changed the tiers over time to discredit some of their stylists their stylists in that directory of their skills which was really weird for me because i remember the days when those stylists were not ranked per se there was um it was mentor stylish or like OG stylist or whatever and then it was everybody else. Now there's multiple tiers and that is very confusing. Um, I don't know what the different tiers mean. That's up in the air and apparently like I don't I don't know. But let's go ahead and skip it. <laughs> skip beyond that. They have went to cut it kinky certified stylist i know i'm not sure about rosie's experience but i know shelly has gone to two stylists in the cut it kinky alumni whatever the alumni means now um and still has experienced her ends being split and damaged african hair god also jumped into the conversation um, if you haven't watched his lives, they are always a hoot. They are always interesting and fun. I'll have all the videos that I'm talking about below in the description if you want to dive deeper into this topic and the issues that these ladies are experiencing. But African Hair God, seeing a stylist perspective was so insightful and interesting. And I know a lot of people struggle to kind of believe these women which is always a horrible thing to say but I saw a lot of back and forth in the comments and these women wouldn't bring this to people's attention for views they just wouldn't I've been following them for a minute and I just I just don't see them doing this to get attention or get a rise out of people. It's really disappointing that some people believe that and I think it's important to hear all these stories especially because this methodology is really new you know what I mean. So it's important to be able to understand what their stories are and their experiences to be able to tweak 
their methods and their mythology and it was very disappointed to see that these women were not being believed and their stories were being discounted and seeing them get harassed in their comment sections, seeing them get harassed in different lives when it comes to trying to get the attention of the ladies of I Am Black Girl Curls and people just not listening, saying it must be something that you did wrong, it must be something that your stylist maybe they didn't have sharp shears it's like no there's something fundamentally going on with the way that they cut and i doubt that these women are doing this just to get the attention because for the most part all this content creation stuff it takes is very time consuming first of all and we're practically doing this for free like you make some money from like adsense and all those things but like in general, you don't make enough money for the amount of labor that is required of this platform for the most part. So for content creators to, you know, always plug the brand and always plug I Am Black Girl Curls and all this stuff, it was very disappointed to see that their issues wasn't addressed when they're such a advocate for these methods, right? Me in included, you know? So it was very disappointing to see that Shelly's been blocked from all pl platforms that they have and all those things. Um, it's just a lot and this is an ongoing issue so please check out their channels for all that information. I'm just making a little summary and adding my two cents in. It has been a minute since I have used raw oils and butters in my hair care routine. I did a whole video about how my hair transformed over time and the things that I learned along the way. So if you're interested in that video, I'll go ahead and plug that in the description below as well. So I do not use products that have oils and butters in the first five to seven ingredients. For the most part, I do not use leave-ins or deep conditioners. I do think my hair has transformed in a positive way so if you feel like you do need to start including leave-ins and deep conditioners into your routine after seeing the effects of curly cuts then definitely just go for it um see what your stylist thinks see how your hair feels you know keep a diary do all those things i have used deep conditioners i don't really see the need in it i could probably count on my one hand how many times i have deep conditioned this year and that's purely because I'm lazy like I'm just gonna say I'm lazy leave-ins I can see the benefits of leave-ins especially under a gel that has a hard cast I am not a fan of a hard cast so I use products that usually are a medium hold I love a fluffier wash and go look washing my hair consistently has done me wonders but there's some people out there that the things that I and Black Girl Curls are saying just doesn't sit right with them and their hair has been impacted. So definitely watch their videos, watch their content. I'm going to keep saying that because it's important for y'all to hear their stories as well. My first curly cut was in 2019, May of 2019, and I'll post a picture right here. This was when I was still in college, so the, this timeline is kind of sporadic. I was not consistent with my curly cuts, and this may have done my hair good, this may have done my hair bad, but I'm just going to lay out the timeline for y'all. I had my first curly cut in May of 2019. Ooh, I might have to check that date, but I had my first curly cut in 2019. I had my second curly cut in 2021. This is after I graduated college, so I was a little bit more consistent with my haircuts. I had my hair straightened in later in 2021 in November. My hair, my ends, they look a little raggedy, but I've gone from May to November without getting my hair cut, okay? and my hair still looked relatively healthy and uh, in 2022 i got my hair cut in may so this is still a long span of time from that november to may and this is where it gets a little funky in may of 2022 when i got my curly cut it was a lot of issues that I had with the salon and the stylist and I go into a little detail about this 
when it comes to my vlog that I did of when I went to the salon. If you want to check that out, I'll leave that in the description as well. But this is where things get a little weird. I had an experience at the salon that I did not care for. Um, I'm not going to talk about those issues um, right now. But when it came to the actual cut, the way the stylist was talking to me, saying that, oh my God, your hair is so pretty and so long and all these things. So you can tell just from the way that she was approaching my hair, she was not getting all the dead ends because she wanted me to retain my length and still have a pretty shape. I was telling her to take off all the dead ends. I don't care if you have to cut into my hair to give me the shape that I'm looking for. I want all of those dead ends to go. I don't want you to hold on to any of those dead ends for the sake of having given me a longer shape. That is something that I'm not interested in. And I should have advocated for that more. At the time, my hair looked fine. It, it did. I was a little concerned because I was like, oh, that's all you need to cut into my hair because I've had curly cuts before. And the way that they're done is you get the dead ends and then you go in and create a shape out of what is left. Or that is my understanding of curly cuts. Now, the specific ways and methods that they do that is more confidential. Um... So I don't know the details of what I am black girl curls is advocating for when it comes to curly cuts. I don't I don't know those things. But I was like it just it just felt a little weird because I didn't see as much hair on the floor as I normally see especially with me not being every 3 months in the chair. So I was like, mm, this doesn't seem like a lot of hair that she's cutting. And when I washed my hair, I did have a bit of resistance when I was detangling my hair. That shouldn't be happening when you have a curly cut. It shouldn't be happening when you have a trim, period. You shouldn't feel as much resistance as I did after my cut. And these cuts aren't cheap. I shouldn't feel any dead raggedy ends. So I didn't go back because I felt like she was preserving my link for the sake of shape and for the sake of long, long hair is beautiful and all, all that crap. So then I went to Curl Coven and got a curly cut that following November. I absolutely loved that shape. I did not have any issues detangling my hair, none of that at all. I love the shape, it grew out beautifully. The next March, I also got a haircut. I will say I saw less hair on the floor and that's because I was a bit more consistent. So I was retaining a little bit of length from that next curly cut. I will say I think where I went wrong, it had nothing to do with my stylist, but I think where I went wrong in that curly cut is being a bit more extreme in my shape. I love the angles that I got from that curly cut. And my stylist said, hey, if you feel any resistance or you feel like you want a little bit more cut off, just you know, come in and we'll figure it out. And I did feel a little resistance, no fault to her getting all my ends, not at all. I felt resistance from where I had the layers cut in my hair. And I talked about this before, how I have to separate out that section when I'm detangling because it is an extreme angle. And if I don't, those short ends tangle up in the longer pieces of hair. And if I go in directly with my detangling tool, with my brush in the shower, even with conditioner on, I'm going to feel resistance in my hair right there. And what African Hair God spelled out, which, you know, Besides all the funny comments that were coming in, the one thing that stood out to me was curly cuts cause your hair to be uneven and you're putting more pressure on your hair at the end of the strands and that's causing you to go through the hair, through the hair because of all those jagged ends. So that's exactly what I was experiencing in the middle of my hair when I was detangling. At a certain point where the short it's short pieces of hair ended and those long pieces came in I was going shoo, shoo, and I was uh, noticing a little bit more breakish than I was used to and I mentioned it and I said I don't really care I just like a quick wash day and now I realize that 
I have to take my time, okay? I have to take my time and separate out the shorter pieces around my crown that give me those amazing layers and amazing shape. I have to separate that out and detangle it gently, okay? Detangle it a little bit more gently than I'm used to prior to my other curly cuts. So I think when the issue comes in is those sharp angles that I Am Black Girl Curls loves and other curly stylists love can be can impact the way that you handle your hair and I don't think that was addressed during my appointment no fault to live I, I love her no fault to her but I think we could have definitely talked about that and I don't think stylists talk about that enough to their clients like you may have to tweak the way you're treating your hair because of your shape Hi, editing Destiny here. I just, I'm editing this video like right, right now because I need to get it out to y'all. But I really quickly wanted to break down the difference of these curly cuts, right? Not just the timeline, but the true difference between the two. My first curly cut was done by somebody that didn't really see the value or didn't really care to do all that work when it came to definition. It's just something that they just did not prefer. And that is the reason why my curly cut looks that way. And it's very undefined. So when I did define it, I did have a tad bit of a tail to my hair. My second stylist I went to really wanted to preserve length, right? So that is why my curly cut looks that way. My third stylist that I saw was actually a student of the fourth stylist that I saw. So they cut very similarly. Now, the second stylist was a cut kinky alumni. The third, not the third, the fourth stylist who is the salon owner and was the educator to the third stylist. That fourth stylist took a class. I do not believe that they are alumni or certified in their programming or anything like that, but they took a class. So it's really interesting to see the, that I Am Black or Curls is trying to create this curriculum. And when you, know, you try to create a curriculum or you're trying to create a program, you trying to set a standard, right? Especially when it comes around to their core center of curly cuts. And it's obvious that some of these people that are considered alumni are deviating from what they are trying to set as the standard. And I think that is where the issue comes into play. And I think that is why we saw these weird tears all of a sudden appear in their directory. That did not used to be there. So it's very interesting to see that shift and I wonder if that is them trying to avoid accountability or is it that they're just realizing, hey, these folks need some more work. But if these people invested time and money into your program and then you try to switch up the system on them, that don't sit right with me. But I just wanted to break that down to show you that there is no set standard of curly cuts within their program and outside of it. So it's really important to vet your curly specialist. And I have a video on that. It's not me just trying to plug it. I truly want y'all to be able to go to your stylist and have these conversations with them and kind of know what you're getting into because there is no set standard is what I'm starting to realize from everybody's stories. There's no set standard. You really have to vet your stylist. You can't just bet on the directory. And I kind of relied on that directory in that video, but I also list some other resources and ways to kind of vet your person. And one of the ways that I talk about that is doing your consultation. Now, I will say my consultation was the exact same my concerns haven't really deviated for the last few years and the way that i want my hair to be shaped has not deviated in the last few years so i have had the same consultation with different stylists and my hair has came out in very different ways so please be careful out there please be careful out there please be careful out there I love a shape. I am not pressed for link retention. And so I'm okay with stylists cutting into my hair to make a shape. If I was more concerned about link retention, 
I would consult a stylist and make sure that I get my hair blown out for my trims and maybe do a combination of the two from blown out hair to curly cut to blown out hair to curly cut to kind of maintain my length but also have a little shape and body to my hair. I'm overdue for a trim right now. You can see some of the pieces hanging a little bit lower. I would want that cut into, but a lot of people want to preserve that length and that is totally okay. I do not know the integrity of my hair since the last time I got it straightened. I don't know what the ends look like in a blown out state since, since what was that? What did I say it was? It was 2021. So I have not blown out my hair since then. It would be really interesting to see what my hair looks like when it is straight and to see what those ends are doing is my hair damaged and I just don't know it. I have an appointment coming up soon so we shall see and I'll keep y'all posted. I'm not sure if my hair has been impacted too much by curly cuts. I hope I don't prove myself wrong. We shall see. I hope this video doesn't age poorly. <laughs> Um, but I do know when it comes to my hair, I experiment a tad bit more than other people that subscribe to this methodology. I know I experience more, I experiment more than Shelly and Rosie Amelia. I know that for sure. I know I'm not the best when it comes to my maintenance cuts. Um, in the past, I've been a bit more consistent right now. Um, but I am due for another one, but I want to get my hair blown out. So I've been going back and forth. I think I'm going to go ahead and get my hair blown out and just see what's going on. And I'll, I'll just keep y'all updated. When it comes to my curly cuts, if I decide to do curly cuts now, because everybody had me second guessing now about curly cuts in general, but I think so far, even if they are quote unquote damaging to my hair, I think I would alternate between getting my hair blown out for trim and curly cuts because I do truly like the shape of curly cuts. I like the tightness and the sharper angles, but I think I would try my best to be a little bit more lax about the shape um because I wouldn't want my detangling process to be impacted by curly cuts um and I wouldn't want to cause any unnecessary breakage to my hair because of those angles I know a lot of tight curl specialists out there are in love with curly cuts because of the geometry and the shape and they're passionate about that and there's a certain a viral aspect to curly cuts as well like the shape if the shape is bomb people are going to recognize that and they want to engage with that content. I have had curly cuts that have gone viral just because people are extremely curious about the process but also they admire the shape of the hair. I just hope that that shape doesn't impact the health of the hair but we shall see. I'm gonna keep y'all updated. Y'all keep me updated. You know chat in those comments. Let me know your experience with curly cuts and we need to figure out what's going on. We need to get to the bottom of this. Why are some people experiencing this and some people aren't experiencing this? What is going on? Go ahead and make sure you like and subscribe because we are on this journey together to get to the bottom of what's, what's happening. So I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye y'all.